Hello and welcome to the SWBN News Watch, where we report global events from a Christian perspective. I am Chimela Chike. Thanks for joining us today. Now let's take a look at some of the major stories you need to hear about. In a recent development, the national leadership of the Emerging Church hosted a conference in Abuja, tagged Possessing the Mountain of the House of the Lord, where the ministering leaders charged the church and its various local leaders to rise to responsibility in this very dark days. Brother Kola Degoke, one of the national coordinators of the Emerging Church, gave the opening charge where he explained the inspiration behind the theme of the conference. Watch. Uh, on behalf of the Abuja Leadership and Church, you are welcome to Abuja, physically the host and the broadcast center for this conference. We have brethren that are joining from various parts of the world. And right now, we are into hundreds. Because there are various clusters. And I'm sure there should be close to 200 people. And some of them are a whole fellowship joining right now. So we run into hundreds and hundreds. And we thank the Lord for making it possible. You know, the devil thought he could limit what God will do by COVID and restrictions. But we thank the Lord because it has opened other avenues. Yes. The Bible says, if they knew, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But we thank the Lord for the opportunities and will maximize it. So you are welcome in Jesus Christ's name. Now, we we'll just go straight to tonight, and we are the body and the theme for this conference is a leadership conference, is possessing the mountain of the house of the Lord. I'll start with two scriptures. There are several scriptures we'll read, but many of them will not read. I'll just mention some in passing. In a gathering like this, we can't undermine what God will do. He gave this charge to a hybrid of both physical and virtual audiences. The hybrid conference, being the first of its kind, had various local assemblies gathered in clusters across Nigeria, joining the conference via Zoom, with some joining from the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada, among others. Still on the just-concluded National Leadership Conference, Brother Richard Yoha, an elder in Abuja House Fellowship and one of the national coordinators of the Emerging Church, also a missionary with the Kingdom's Mission Support Foundation, told the congregation about the remarkable progress they had made as a team, as well as the particular challenges the mission work was facing in Nigeria and beyond. Listen to what he told the audience on the last day of the conference. Watch. The Lord told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. <clears throat> I think one of the challenges we've had, which God helped us to overcome, has been the fact that missions for many was preaching the kingdom message alone and without the emphasis on getting the nations to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I think God helped us and uh, we've overcome that. We have had crusades. We've had the uh, medical outreaches, both in Nigeria and outside the country. And uh, we've had, you know, massive meetings to reach out to communities and to get many people, including some monarchs, to receive Christ, as we shall see in the report. Amen. The work of mission. He went further to recount several mission efforts in Nigeria and the diaspora while encouraging the brethren to make themselves available for the mission field, both physically, spiritually, and financially. 
Moreover, as WBN is watch, monitored the conference and witnessed every single highlight, particularly the special indication for the emerging church to break bread on a national level, serving as a token of healing and restoration through the body of Jesus broken for us and his shed blood. Note that the emerging church is a body of independent and co-dependent local assemblies who believe in the supremacy of God's authority in his ecclesia. The emerging church is non-denominational and maintains that the body of Christ is one and should not be divided by the walls of denominations. Stay with us for more updates on the SWBN News Watch. Still on missions efforts in Nigeria, the Alone with God team, AWG, organized a kingdom missions and medical outreach at Ohaji Ohaba community in Egbema local government area of Imo State, located in southeast Nigeria. Brother Mecca Mordi, an elder in Port Harcourt Fellowship and also the founder of the Mission Safe House, led the AWG team in this effort to take God's love to the unreached. He told us that over a period of seven days, 1,800 persons attended the program and about 500 persons received their healing, while 1,120 persons received medical treatment. Listen to what Murdy told as WBN News Watch in a WhatsApp voice note. Yeah, thank you, Chemela. The location of the medical and gospel outreach we just did last week is at Ohuba Ohaji in Egbema local government area in Imo State. It was a one-week um, medical and gospel outreach. In attendance, those who turned up and showed up for the program, Monday was 72, um, Tuesday 167, Wednesday 205, Thursday 240, Friday 300, 320, and Saturday the same. And the total number of persons who actually came for the program were more than 1,500 persons. The theme of the program was all hoba, let there be light. And the scriptures that were taken from it were Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. And then um, the venue precisely was held at Ohuba Central School in Ohaji, a Bema local government area in Imo State. We had over 500 testimonies. We had over 250 persons giving their life to Christ. And um, that's, that's on the spot. And then we had well over 1,200 persons who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So all of this, you know, put together. God's children from across Nigeria gathered in Imo State for this very great commission. Brother Dio Kankafri journeyed from Asaba to join this effort. He went on to tell us that, quote, the crown prince of the local community, though a believer had been silenced by witch doctors and saw the coming of the AWG team as a source of strength and deliverance to the believers in the community and to the community as a whole. He also added that the crown prince whose name was not mentioned dedicated the whole land to the to god murdy corroborated this uh, testimony listen we had a visitation to the to the monarch that's the is the of ohuba land um they gave them i mean the kingdom was handed over to christ and the prince of the land you know dedicated the kingdom back to jesus christ and he gave his life to christ also Moreover, the medical gospel outreach also proved to be very helpful to the young and old alike. Kankafri told us WBN News Watch that the medical team were awesome. In his very words, quote, our brethren from the team were awesome. We almost had more people coming for medicine than the main evening program. So we seized the opportunity to lead them to Christ and minister the Holy Spirit and minister healing too, end of quote. Adding to that, the AWG team also organized an interdenominational pastors forum that included representatives from Deeper Life Bible Church, Watchmen Catholic uh, Charismatic Renewal Movement, and Redeemed Christian Church of God, among others. It was an opportunity to share the kingdom message. Listen. Um, we have the pastors forum uh, made up of Deeper Life Watchmen, Redeemed Christian Gospel, um, and all of the uh, single-owned Pentecostal fellowships. We had what we call pastors' meeting or pastors' segment where we had to minister to them the truth, the current truth. Of course, it brought a lot of um, upheaval, but of course, um, they saw the light of what the Lord has sent us to do in Hoover. But I can say that they have requested of us to return back 
and finish up the second leg of medical uh, and gospel outreach. God bless you. Moving on, CBN News reported that a Michigan physician assistant claims she was wrongfully terminated, called evil, and blamed for the suicide of transgender people by hospital staff simply because she refused to acknowledge the preferred pronouns of patients due to her religious beliefs. The First Liberty Institute, a nonprofit legal organization, sent a letter of complaint to Michigan Health last week on behalf of Valerie Klusterman, demanding she be rehired. Klusterman worked for Michigan Health for 17 years but was fired last year after she sought a religious accommodation that would prevent her from having to use transgender pronouns or refer patients for transgender surgical procedures and drugs. Kusterman's uh, predicament is a clear depiction of what the scripture warned about. Recall that uh, the scripture sharply rebukes those who call evil good and good evil. In the spirit of prophecy, and as recorded in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, the Lord told Isaiah that, quote, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, end of quote. Going further, the Bible also records Paul's admonition to Timothy in his second letter concerning those who seek to turn others away from the truth. In his words, quote, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things and your afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. End of quote. Recall that we had earlier reported a similar case in Ireland. Here is what the Guardian reported in a follow up to the case where Enoch Burke, a school teacher, was jailed for refusing to use the they pronoun on a biological male transitioning to female. Reports have it that Enoch Burke failed to obtain a court injunction that would have paved his release and return to school, leaving him in Mount Joy Prison in Dublin. The evangelical Christian says he is a prisoner of conscience and has won support from social conservatives and right-wing cultural commentators across the world since being jailed on 5th of September. The Irish, the Irish Examiner reported that Burke has formally lodged an appeal against a high court injunction preventing him from attending or teaching at the school where he is employed. Burke was committed to prison last month and is required to stay there until he agrees to obey the court order that commands him not to attend at or attempt to teach any classes at Wilson's Hospital School in Cole Westmeath. The Guardian also reported that liberal commentators have blamed the teacher for his predicament and derided those who consider him a free speech martyr. Fintan Otsule wrote that his transformation into an icon of freedom, freedom of expression, is frankly hilarious. Still quoting The Guardian, Burke holds degrees in theology, education and history and has been a teacher for 10 years. He's the author of a book titled The Hedonism and Homosexuality of John Piper and Sam Albury, The Truth of Scripture. It accuses the two evangelical pastors of turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Burke is from a prominent family. His parents, Martina and Sean Burke, homeschooled their 10 children. They have biblical names and excelled academically, winning scholarships, debating contests and other awards. They have become well-known for running in student uh, elections, staging protests about LGBTQ rights and suing universities and employers. Still a follow-up story, CBN News has given us updates on what happened to this valedictorian who was facing backlash for his biblical worldviews. 
Christian Cortez Perez, a valedictorian from a university in Mexico, is finally receiving his degree and license to practice psychology after a group of faculty members tried to end his professional career before he could even get started labeling his valedictory address as hate speech. Professors at the Autonomous University of Baja, California, UABC in Mexico demanded that the school withhold Perez's academic degree and psychology license for what he said during his commencement speech, according to ADF International, a faith-based legal advocacy organization. In the latest turn of events, the University Council ruled that the arguments presented by the aggrieved party are unfounded, as well as the sanctions requested, for which reason the appeal filed is dismissed. Describing his ordeal, Perez said that what happened to him shows how dangerous it is when professors with agendas try to punish students with whom they disagree. He added that academic institutions must respect the free speech rights of all students and this is a great win for fundamental freedoms. Still on faith and culture, the Christian Headlines reported that one of Australia's most prominent sports teams forced out its new CEO last Tuesday after it became public that he was a member of an evangelical church that affirms biblical teachings on sexuality. 57-year-old Andrew Thorburn was named CEO of the Essendon Football Club which competes within the Australian Football League, the highest level of competition in the unique sport of Australian rules football. Thurban stepped down barely 24 hours later, saying the club had forced him to make a choice between his new position and his association with an Australian-based evangelical church, City on a Hill, where he serves as chairman and a member and is also a member. The congregation affirms biblical teachings on gender and sexuality and believes marriage is, is defined as the union of one man and one woman. The church's belief on LGBT issues and its pro-life stance on abortion were the subjects of most criticism. Thurban, a lifelong fan of the Bombers, said his appointment as CEO was, quote, one of the proudest days of my life, unquote. His statement further has him saying that, quote, today it became clear to me that my personal Christian faith is not tolerated or permitted in the public square, at least by some and perhaps by many. I was being required to compromise beyond the level that my conscience allowed. People should be able to hold different views on complex personal and moral matters and be able to live and work together, even with those differences and always with respect. Behavior is the key. This is all an important part of a tolerant and diverse society." Unquote. Reporting on persecution, Manistar News has it that a Christian woman in northeast Nigeria is on trial after being held incommunicado for more than four months on blasphemy charges for forwarding a WhatsApp message, sources said. 45-year-old Rhoda Jao Jatao was arrested in Bauchi State in May after receiving a WhatsApp message from Ghana condemning the gruesome killing of Deborah Imano Yakubo, a university student in Sokoto State, also falsely accused of blaspheming Islam. Jatao shared the message condemning Yakubo's May 12th death with colleagues in Waraji County and Muslims who saw it accused her of blasphemy and sought to kill her. Security agents from the Department of State Services Nigeria's secret police arrested her on 20th of May and she was incarcerated when Muslim mobs stormed her house seeking to kill her. Meanwhile, in a press statement, her attorney Joshua Nasara said that, quote, ever since her arrest, Mrs. Jatao has been detained in prison over false accusations of blasphemy, charged with inciting public disturbance, exciting contempt of religious creed and cyber stalking. Efforts to secure bail for Jatao 
A health worker with the Waraji local government area has been frustrated and denied by government authorities and leaders of Islamic groups in the state. Quote. Commenting on the situation, Reverend Ishako Dano of the Evangelical Church winning all equa in Waraji County said the blasphemy charges are false. Jatao shared the WhatsApp message only as a word of caution against further violence in northern Nigeria where Muslim mobs were wrecking havoc, but the Muslims had a different interpretation. Since the occurrence of the incident in May 2022, there have been campaigns by Muslims for Mrs. Jatao to be killed for blasphemy against Muhammad. On the entertainment beat, CBN is reported that Scooby Doo fans are flocking to social media, both applauding and criticizing the latest animated installment after the film's director confirmed that Velma will officially be gay. In clips of the newly released HBO Max's Halloween special Trick or Treat Scooby Doo, Velma tells Daphne that she has a crush on a female character and villain named Coco Diablo. Diablo is a Spanish word that means devil. The movie's director, Audi Harrison, told NPR that while writing and directing this, quote, I just set out to have fun with the comedy of an awkward teenage crush, unquote. She also went on to say that it does feel great to be a part of normalizing representation, especially with such a well-known franchise like Scooby-Doo. Many fans are applauding the review. One fan tweeted, OMG, lesbian Velma, finally. The tweet came alongside the new movie clip, which has garnered over 100,000 likes. But others are calling the cartoon's depiction another vehicle to target young children with LGBTQ ideology. Steven Crowder, host of Louder with Crowder, said this is meant to confuse children. Another Twitter user wrote that, quote, The scene is entirely subversive and meant to condition young girls away from biblical, away from biblical teaching, unquote. Another tweet wrote that, quote, Velma as a lesbian in Scooby-Doo was supposed to be an inside joke for the mature fans not out, in, not out in the open to confuse the children. Stop the grooming, end of quote. Still quoting CBN News, in 2020, director James Gunn said, the, said he tried to make Velma explicitly gay in the live-action Scooby-Doo movie back in 2001, but Warner Brothers pushed back. Meanwhile, Tony Seven, a producer on the Mystery Incorporated cartoon series, also confirmed that Velma was a lesbian in his depiction of her in 2020. He shared on Instagram that, quote, We made our intentions as clear as we could 10 years ago. Most of our fans got it. To those, to those that didn't, I suggest you look closer." End of quote. And that will be all for this edition of the SWBN News Watch. Thank you so much for staying with us. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Till we meet next Thursday 9pm, I remain Chimela Chike. Do stay tuned.